Welcome to a brand new Roblox Studio Central video. Today, I'll be showing you how to create your very own leader stat script and use data store service in Roblox to save your values. Maybe I'm talking nonsense right now. What I mean is when you join the game and you get cash and you have to leave, you want it set up when you rejoin, you still have your cash. So today I'll be showing you how to create exactly that. So be sure to subscribe, hit those notifications, comment down below on what I should next, and let's get started. So we're gonna go ahead and start off in server script service. We're gonna add a script and I'm gonna name it leader stats. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna delete the print and we're gonna start off with a with a few variables. So the first variable is our data store. So local DSS for data store service is gonna be equal to game colon get service data store service. Right below that, we're gonna define our actual data store. So local store is gonna be equal to DSS colon get st data store. And I'm gonna name this cash store one or something. If you ever change this value while there are values saved in the data store, everything is gonna get reset and deleted. So be careful when changing this because it's gonna reset your entire data store. All right, let's start off with our first event. Game.players.playerAdded connect function and inside the parameters, we're gonna add player. So when the player joins, we want a few things to uh, happen. First, we want to create a folder. So local folder is gonna be equal to instance.new folder. The folder name has to be leader stats. Has to be, so you can't name it anything else. Otherwise, you will not see that little leader stats thing on the side. And folder.parent, so we're just going to parent it to the player. We also want to create the value. So local cache, or whatever your value is, is going to be equal to instance.new uh, int value. Cache.name is going to be equal to cache, while cache.parent is going to be equal to folder. We want to parent it inside the folder. Next, we want to define our data, so local data, nothing else after it. All we want to do now is update the player's data if they have any. So local success, arm err, is going to equal to pcall function So now, we're going to do look, uh, data, so we're going to set the data to be equal to, um, we're going to do store, and we're going to get the async from the player.user ID. So we've opened the pcall function, and we're setting this to whatever we get back from inside the data store. If there is any data, and the data is zero, you can find this key uh, right beside your one on your keyboard if you press shift and click it. So if there is data and the data is not zero, then, and it should be zero because there wouldn't be any data, then we are gonna print, we don't have to print, but I'm gonna print this data success fully updated for add player dot name and right below it we want to set the value to whatever that data was if there wasn't any data then we're gonna print player dot name doesn't have oops any Saved data. 
no data was updated. And after that, we're just going to set the cache.value to zero, just to make sure that it is zero. Awesome. So below that, we're going to make our statement saying that if this was successful, the process was successful. So if success, then we're going to print update process, or whatever you say, process. Case process. I'm just gonna do updating value complete. If there was an error during this process, we're gonna write warn ERR. And that's it. So we've created the, both the things, the folder and the cache. We've created a variable for data. And inside this pico function, we set this to whatever we got back from inside the data store. If there was data and the data was not zero, then we set the cache.value to whatever that was. If there was no value, then we're going to set that value to zero, the cache value. And here we're just stating that if this was successful if or not. So on line 34, we're going to do another event. It's going to be the game.players.player, oops, player removing event. And inside the parameters of the function, we're gonna add player. So in here, this is a shoulder script. We want to save the data. So we're gonna do local success err is equal to pcall function. We wanna open that up. So yeah, we are opening another pcall function because we wanna make sure that data actually saves and if it was successful. So we're gonna do was that store set async? I want to set the first one to player that user ID, and we want to save the value. So player that user stat cash dot value. So we're going to the data store. We're setting it to the player, the player's user ID, and we're setting the value to the cash value. And that will be all. So below that, we're just going to do if success, then we're going to print player.name dot dot cache was, or value, whatever you want to put in there, was successfully saved. If there was an error during this process, we're going to warn it with a big, bold, yellow error. Alright, and we're done. Now, I have another optional script that you can add in the after the success, this is optional and a little risky at the same time. You can also save the data right away if the script detects a change in the value. So you can do cache.changed, it can open another function, and in here, you just copy all this and put it directly in here. But this is a very risky process because it could mess with the limitations of the data store. Data store usually saves every six seconds. So if your data would save every few seconds, you saving the data every single time it changes would be very risky. You could have data loss or a severe lag in your game or to that player. So I only recommend this if you want to save it for, let's say, every I don't know, whenever the data changes, but if it isn't as frequent. But I'm gonna stick with my script for now. One more thing, if you are testing in Roblox Studio, you want to go to game settings, you wanna make sure that your game is published. So once mine publishes, I'm gonna click close. Oops, why did I just add a negative part? So we're gonna go back here. You wanna go to security, and you want to enable HTTP requests and API services. If you can see below, it says, enable studio access to game services, such as data store. Otherwise, you will not have access to the data store and you can't test in studio. Let's go and test this out. So 
So as you can see beside here, we says, it says that I don't have any saved data and no data was updated. And we can see that the process was successful. So we're gonna go into the server. I'm gonna go into my folder leader stats and when I go to my value, I'm gonna change the value to 100. So say I just got $100 in my game. I'm gonna go back to the client, server client. This would be the client. This would be a server. Don't mix that up. Okay, so we have, as you can see here, my cash is now 100. Let's go and leave the game. So beside here, you can see that my cache was successfully saved. So let's go try and rejoin the game, see if it actually did save. As you can see, it did find data in the data store. So it said data successfully updated. You can see that I have actually have now 100. And the process was successful. There we go. It saves every time I leave and it updates every time I join. That's it. Thank you guys for watching. Again, be sure to subscribe. Hit the like button if you learned something new today and comment down below on what I should do next. Bye.